Hi everyone and welcome to Unit 12, Module 68. Today we are talking about schizophrenia. Here are your learning objectives and here is your vocab. So schizophrenia is a psychological disorder that's characterized by delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, and possibly diminished or inappropriate emotional expressions. It really looks different in everyone and it varies so we're going to talk about all the possible symptoms and what they mean. Literally translated, it means split mind because the person is split from reality. So not in the idea of multiple personalities or anything like that. Um, it's just a break from reality, a psychosis. Um, nearly one in 100 people develop schizophrenia and about 60% of those are men. It is estimated that 24 million suffer from it worldwide. The main, it is the main example of psychosis. And psychosis is a psychotic disorder that's marked by irrationality and, again, that lost contact with reality. So one of the symptoms that can occur is delusions, which are false beliefs. They're often of persecution or grandeur, and they may accompany those psychotic disorders. So it could be something like feeling like they're talking to God or that they are God or that people are out to get them, the government's out to get them, or someone in particular is out to get them, things like that. Those would be delusions. Their thoughts that are clearly not based in reality. Hallucinations are false sensory experiences, such as seeing something in the absence of any visual stimuli. Most often, the hallucinations with schizophrenia are auditory. Um, they're usually voices that are making insulting remarks or giving orders, and they could, they're usually, you know, very un unfriendly. Um, most of the time where they're telling them how awful they are or stupid for making mistakes or whatever they're or questioning everything that they're doing while they're trying to do it um, or telling them to do things that can cause themselves harm. Um, disorganized thoughts kind of come from this breakdown in reality and so they're having trouble with their selective attention. They're not able to focus the way someone else would be able to use selective attention and process out like little details. Like they'll notice like the little like grooves on something that they're looking at and they'll just focus on that or talk about something that's, it's just completely unfiltered. Um, so, Emotions expressed can be inappropriate or just like completely disconnected from reality. So, for example, someone laughing when they're recalling their grandmother's death or um, being um, angry for really no reason out of nowhere, um, the emotions are just disconnected from reality. Others can lapse into flat affect. So this is kind of the opposite. Flat affect, they have, um, they show no emotion and behaviors can be off as well. So some examples of this are rocking back and forth, rubbing their arms. Some can exhibit catatonia where they just remain completely motionless for many hours um, and then maybe afterwards becoming agitated. So all of these inap inappropriate emotions and behaviors can make it really difficult, obviously socially or to hold a job and more so than other disorders um, from what people have um, seen in studies. So given proper support and medication, over 40% of patients can have periods of a year or more where they just experience normal life. Um, but the problem is that many people with schizophrenia do not receive or have adequate 
health care, they don't have adequate family support. And so without those things, they are lost um, and socially isolated. And so you see this especially, again, with those of lower socioeconomic status who cannot who don't have the same family connections necessarily. They don't have the same access. One in 100 people, like we said, can have, schizo or have schizophrenia, and it is not a culture-bound disorder, meaning it happens across the world, and it typically begins in young adulthood, and it's more common in men than women, and actually the onset with men is on average four years younger compared to women. So some of those symptoms that we were discussing on the previous slide are positive symptoms and some of them are negative symptoms. I want you to remember, again, with psychology, positive and negative being adding and taking away. So positive symptoms add something to the person's behaviors or thoughts. So some things that would be adding would be those paranoid delusions or those thoughts. Um, hallucinations would be adding something. Talking in disorganized or diluted ways would be adding something. Negative would be less than normal, right? So a flat affect, that's an emotionless state. Or social withdrawal or catatonia, so that's when they're um, not moving. So those things take away and so they're negative symptoms. So um, it can emerge gradually, and when it emerges gradually, it's called chronic schizophrenia, and actually recovery is less likely. It's something that they're going to have to um, deal with throughout their life, and this tends to be more common in men, um, and people with chronic schizophrenia, schizophrenia tend to exhibit more negative symptoms. Um, for some, the onset is sudden, so after something very stressful, and it's called acute schizophrenia, and recovery is more likely, and they're more likely to have positive symptoms, and those positive symptoms do work better with drug therapy. So what we know is that there are many brain abnormalities with people who have schizophrenia. One of them is an access of dopamine receptivity, meaning they have more receptors for dopamine, and that excess dopamine is linked to symptoms of schizophrenia. It can intensify hallucinations and those paranoia um, experiences. So it's adding to those positive symptoms. Their drugs that the drugs that help schizophrenia block dopamine to lower that and balance that out. Obviously, some drugs, like we've talked about in the sensation and perception unit, work to increase dopamine levels. So someone who uses cocaine um, is going to have increased symptoms. And sometimes a person doesn't know that they have the genetic predisposition for schizophrenia and then uses cocaine and that can really cause um, an induce of symptoms. So chronic schizophrenia shows several brain abnormalities. There's lower activity in the frontal lobes and the neural firing going on in the frontal lobes is out of sync. And so the neural network is not working properly. And that contributes to some of those schizophrenic symptoms. Brain scans, when people are having hallucinations, show an increased activity in the thalamus. And remember, the thalamus is the part of the brain that receives all sensory info, except for smell. And it also shows an increase in the amygdala, which is our fear and aggression um, center. Some studies have shown brain shrinkage in the thalamus, in the um, cortex, and the corpus callosum. So here, this image here shows you um, someone with a healthy brain and someone with schizophrenia. And the brain with schizophrenia has a, um, more of an open space, and that's fluid-filled due to the shrinkage. 
So the key point here with brain abnormalities is that it's not just one part of the brain that um, is noticed as different in a brain of someone who has schizophrenia. There are several different factors and they can look different in different people. So some of the possible risk factors and correlations, low birth weight, maternal diabetes, old paternal age, oxygen deprivation at birth. Um, famine is actually a possible risk factor. There's several studies that link times of famine to um, increased rates of babies born with schizophrenia. A key factor um, that seems to be shown in many studies is mid-pregnancy, the mother having a viral infection such as the flu, and that seems to impair fetal brain development and maybe possibly cause, possibly cause some of those brain abnormalities we just spoke of. So obviously viral infections aren't the only reason since we're only talking about 2% of women who get the flu actually get, uh, have children with schizophrenia. Um, adoption studies also confirm that genetic link and environment can basically turn on those certain genes. So you can have the genetic predisposition to have schizophrenia and not get schizophrenia because you need both the genetic predisposition and those environmental factors. So some of these are in utero and some of these are um, after birth. So um, environmental factors alone, like I said, cannot induce schizophrenia. There has to be the genetic link. That is not true with all disorders, but it is true with schizophrenia. There must be a genetic link. Um, researchers want to identify high-risk children by understanding more about these environmental factors. So here are some things that they found. Um, children who socially are socially withdrawn or acting oddly before could that just is one flag one flag doesn't mean anything alone a mother who has severe schizophrenia um, birth complications like we said such as lack of oxygen deprivation low birth weight being separated from parents early on Short attention span or poor muscle coordination seems to have a correlation. Disruptive or withdrawn behavior, emotional unpredictability, and poor peer relations or solo play. So those all seem to be um, risk factors or flags. So takeaways. Remember that an individual must have the genetic predisposition in order to develop schizophrenia. But it is not genetics alone that decides who gets schizophrenia. There's environmental factors to that influence the genes. Positive symptoms are things that add, such as delusions and hallucinations, and negative symptoms are things that take away, such as catatonia. Brain abnormalities, um, there's not just one, there are many um, linked to schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, um, people with schizophrenia have an excess of dopamine in their brain and they can take medication to control that and help the symptoms, especially if they're positive. Viral infections mid-pregnancy seem to have um, a clear increase of risk in a child getting schizophrenia. And finally, it is more common in men than women. So that sums up module 68 on schizophrenia, and I will see you in class. Thanks, guys.